So some people have been sending me this article that was recently written by this group called Super Tokens, and it's called The Best Way to Securely Manage User Sessions. And basically in this, they go over some different authentication strategies you can use, and then they suggest the one that they like the best, and then they even open source a library that you can use in Node.js to actually implement it. So I read through the entire article and I went through their source code for the library that they wrote, and I'm gonna share some of my thoughts and opinions on whether I think this is a good approach to use. So first off, we're gonna kinda just go over what exactly they are proposing. So if we go to their second part of the article, they have this little diagram which outlines uh, basically the authentication flow that they're suggesting that they like the best. And how it works is you will have a refresh token and an access token. So I authenticate and then the server sends me back an access token and a refresh token. And then when I send requests to the server, um, it's gonna send me data back, right? All right, next the state is gonna be when access tokens expire. So we send a request we send our access token and it says it is expired. Um, the server tells us it's expired. Then we're gonna send our refresh token and then we can get a new refresh token and new access token. Then we can send a data request uh, with the new tokens that we got and we're good to go. The last part is when the access token and the refresh token both expire, uh, in which case we send a request, we view the access tokens expired, same thing with refresh, and then the user's logged out. So that's kind of the flow of how they do um, authentication. Now the interesting part in this article that I had not really thought much about before was uh, basically finding out when a token has been stolen and how you can prevent situations like that. Um, so they have this part in the text where they talk about that. Um, I think it can be a little hard to just read from the text, so I made a little diagram because they didn't have a diagram of the exact attack. Um, so this is basically um, how you can tell if a user has stolen the token or what one way you can do it. So pretend we have this dude over here who has a who's logged in at your website and he has the refresh token zero and the access token zero. Uh, and I called this guy victim too, but this is actually the attacker. So pretend we have an attacker over here. Attacker. And this guy stole the refresh token zero and access token zero and now he has stolen this token. So how, as us, the server, how do we know that a token has been stolen? So this is uh, one way that you can do that. So basically how it works is uh, we wait until the access token has expired, uh, and then basically what's going to happen is the victim or the attacker, one of them, is going to uh, send the refresh tokens to the server. In this case, refresh token zero. And then the server is gonna be like, okay, here is a new refresh token and a new um, access token, refresh token one, access token one. And the other thing that it does is it gets rid of or invalidates the old token, in this case, refresh token zero. Uh, so then when the attacker tries to send refresh token zero to get a new uh, token, the server is gonna be like, hey, I already invalidated this refresh token zero. Uh, looks like someone has stolen the token. And at this point, you can do whatever you want. You can log out all users. Um, that is up to you. But basically, you know that a, to a token has been stolen because you know the real user, or at least one user, um, was given a new token, and now uh, they've been using that refresh token one, and then someone else made a request with an old token. So you know that old token was stolen. So that is the gist of it. Um, I recommend reading the article to get more of a context of what's going on. And next one I'm gonna talk about is more of the implementation of this. I think in general, this is a pretty good, um, I think this seems like a pretty good strategy uh, in theory, um, but the implementation they have on GitHub, you can click on that and you can see there's a Node.js one. I went through the code for that and I have a few things that I feel like could be improved about it. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do before we jump to the implementation, I guess, that I noted was here's a paragraph that they were talking about other ways that you can detect tokens are stolen. Uh, so things like storing the IP or fingerprinting the user's browser. Um, but they said that these methods themselves can be interact inaccurate and easy to spoof and difficult to implement. Um, I actually, I can see where it can be easy to spoof, say, the the fingerprint of the device. So let's say you are storing some 
uh, fingerprint for the mobile phone or for the browser. And then I can just read the headers that you're sending up with that. And so I know what the fingerprint of your browser is basically. I can see where that can be easy to steal as well as the token. Like I feel if you feel like if you can steal a token, you can probably steal the information needed to know what the fingerprint for a device is. Though I feel like um, when I was looking at their implementation, it seems a little bit more complex than if you were to implement uh, this. I feel like implementing IP addresses and fingerprinting seems not as hard as what uh, they were doing, but that's just an aside. All right, so let's go over a little bit more about their implementation. So the first thing that uh, struck me is that they're using MySQL and uh, they're using some cron jobs. Well, maybe it was just one cron job I think I looked at. Um, where basically they're using it to kill old refresh tokens. So I don't think there, there's anything inherently wrong with storing this data in MySQL. I just think you could probably improve this with uh, Redis for one being speed and two, you don't have to worry about setting up a cron job. This is from their code, by the way. Um, so they're using a uh, Node.js cron library. Um, you don't have to worry about setting up a cron job that goes and kills old tokens uh, in MySQL. You can just use the uh, TTL in uh, uh, Redis. The other thing is their code just seemed pretty complex. There seemed to be a ton going on and pairing that with it's a very new library. Um, so this was just published a couple days ago. So it's the oldest commit, it's what, 23 days? Um, so it's a very new library. And uh, so it's not very battle tested and oops, it seems to be like it is very complex when I was going over the code. There seems to be a lot going on in it um, that I'm very skeptical of it. I feel like there's more room for errors and there's more room for bugs when there's a lot going on in the package itself. And so I would be skeptical of that. Um, the other thing is the package is absolutely huge. So it is 1.4 megabytes minified. It is much better at least, um, but still. Uh, so this seems to be the biggest chunk of this is from uh, using moment time zone and moment, which I found very interesting that they're loading this entire thing in there. Uh, my guess is it was because of this one feature that they have where they are doing automatic JWT signing key generation. Now this is something that I haven't, uh, I don't know a ton about, and I was doing a little research about it, and it looks like you need to be worried about time zones and times when doing this sort of thing, so I'm guessing maybe they're using it because of that. But either way, the package seems super bloated. There just seems to be too much stuff in this, in this authentication package, um, uh, and I feel like they should either split it up or make it smaller. Um, and the one thing that they're using in this package, they are tying themselves to express and they're tying themselves to cookies. So those like two things that they are like hard coding in their package. Like for example, if we go to one of their examples here, we have to actually send in the request and the response from express. So I don't think it was a very good design choice to tie yourself to express and to tie yourself to cookies, I feel like you should make the package itself smaller and make it so you can use it with any framework um, for either of those, or if you want to, you can store it in local storage. So I feel like that was another one where um, I wasn't a fan of that choice. Uh, and it's a, they said they were not, um, it doesn't work for mobile yet. And I think that a lot of the reason for that is because they tie themselves to uh, this. So in my opinion, I feel like this uh, package in general could be a lot smaller and a lot uh, more specific and less complex. I feel like you could simplify it and choose just a smaller chunk that you actually implement and then either add add-ons that work with Express easier, but the core of the library, I feel like you can cut off a lot of extra stuff that they have in there. Um, but yeah, those are just a few notes I had about the implementation itself, uh, and I'm not probably keen to use this but uh, I could I could see change in my mind. In general, though, like I like I like the user interface, if you will. Like their API seems pretty nice, um, but I'm not um, a huge fan of the implementation. Anyway, the other thing that I'm kind of thinking about in regards to this that these are questions I'm, I've asked myself that I'm like trying to think about and currently thinking about related to this because I'm I haven't thought a lot about the best way to prevent theft is one, uh, with this particular setup, I'm not sure if a refresh token is needed. I need to think more about this. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Well, I think maybe what you could do 
is you could do something like this where you just have one token where you have access token zero, something like this. And then uh, when you send access token zero, if it's expired, but the secret's still good, you send back another access token, access token one, and then you say this is now invalid. Um, and then when this guy sends up access, access token zero, it then is expired. I'm not 100% sure, I haven't thought it all through, but I think you may be able to do this without an access token or a refresh token. Um, I'm not sure what you would lose or if you could just get all upside. But that was one thing that uh, when I did my refresh token tutorial, someone said I could just get away with a single token. And you may be able to do the same thing with this. Um, I could see single token being a possible way to simplify this a little bit. Um, but there may be some cons to it. Second thing that I'm thinking about is how the heck you do JWT secret rotations. So I need to look into this and the pros and cons of it because I don't really know a lot about it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing that. And the third thing is, is the biggest takeaway I got from this is that basically what it comes down to is uh, a single access token should map to a single device ID. Um, and so that is, that is basically the principle. So the question is, what is the best way to enforce that? And so what I mean by that is take, take two examples. So example one, there's two device IDs using the same token. So you know that this is a stolen token, obviously, because one, uh, let's say my iPhone, uh, iPhone 7, Ben's iPhone 7, we have that as a device ID, is using an access token. No one else should ever have access to that same access token. If I log in on my computer, I should get a new access token. So the only way that two devices would be using the same access token I believe, maybe I haven't thought out some case, but I believe the only way a single, uh, two devices would be using the same token is if a token was stolen. Um, so in that case, this is an obvious token stolen. But where things get blurry is when spoofing comes in. So back up to here where it's easy to s uh, spoof like the fingerprint of what you're using for the device ID. So let's say someone is spoofing that. Um, and that's what we're this case where you have a single device ID. So we have, uh, Ben's iPhone 7 who is sending up two tokens well he, he in multiple he's sending multiple requests and there's two access tokens being used across both so the, the the thing here is what do you do to detect whether the token is stolen or whether the token is just being refreshed um, and is either using an old token and they're fine um, so that is the gist of it is uh, but it's possible that the device ID is being spoofed if there's two tokens being used because Ben's iPhone 7 should only be using one access token at a time. It should never be, like it should never make a request with access token. Like this sequence should just never happen. Where I send a request with access token one, and then I send a request with access token zero, and then I send a request with access token zero. Like this this sequence should just never happen unless a token is stolen. Um, so there's stuff like that, or at least I don't think, um, but anyway, those are the things that I'm now thinking about in regards to this. Um, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts on, are on this and if you like this library and if you have any feedback on the um, implementation or the method as well. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, anyway, that's it for this video.